The Hack Driver is a beautiful story written by St. Clair Lois. Student, what do you mean by the Hack Driver? Hack Driver means the cab driver or we can say the car driver. A person who drives for living. Here is the story of a cab driver. It is an interesting story of a cunning person called Bill. He made a plan to be fool the lawyer. So we'll read the story and I'll explain you the chapter. Hello everyone, today I am Nikan Pat working in DP Sambali Ramachar as an STGT. In today's video, I'll explain you chapter 8, the hack driver from footprints without feet. This story is written by Sam Lewis. Sam Lewis was a famous American short story writer, novelist and playwright. He was the first American writer who received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1930. So student, it is a very interesting story. In this story, the hack driver. Here the hack means the car driver. The car driver made fool to a young lawyer. So in this story, a young lawyer, he went to New Orleans to give summon to Oliver Lutin. So when he reached there, he met a person named Bill. Bill the hack driver. So they became good friends. The Bill or we can say the hack driver helped him to search Oliver Lutkins. So let's read the story and find who was Oliver Lutkins or whether the narrator find the Oliver Lutkins. In previous video we saw that the narrator and Bill they went to different places to find Oliver Lutkin. But whenever they reached there, everybody was there in the shop told them that Oliver Lutkin left few minutes before. So this way what happened, they were not able to catch the Oliver Lutkin. So now we'll read the next part of the story and we'll find what happened afterwards. I was hungry but I had so enjoyed Bill's rough country opinions about his neighbors that I scarcely cared whether I found Lutkins or not. So here the narrator is saying that he was feeling so hungry because it was already 1 o'clock and by that time the narrator was feeling so hungry. But he forgot his hunger because he was enjoying Bill's talk. Because the Bill was commented on his neighbors and at the same time he was not bothered whether he would find the Lutkin or not. How about something to eat? I suggested. Let's go to a restaurant and I will buy you lunch. Later the narrator asked to eat something and he suggested to Bill to go to some restaurant and he would buy lunch for him. Well, I ought to go to home to the wife. I don't care much for these restaurant. Only four of them are four of them and they are all bad. Tell you to what we will do. When the narrator suggested Bills to go some restaurant, the Bill replied that he had to go to his wife, his home. Because he didn't like the food of these restaurant, only four of them are their restaurant in their countryside and they are none of them are good and he said to the narrator that he would suggest some best place for lunch we'll get the wife to pack up a lunch for us then he suggested he'll they'll go to his wife and will would say her to pack lunch for them she won't charge you more than half a dollar and she would ask his wife to pack lunch for them and for that she would charge only half dollar. And it would cost you more for a greasy meal in a restaurant. And if he would go to the restaurant and they would charge more. And we'll go up to the Wade's Hill and enjoy the view while we eat. And he said, we would go to, they would go to some hill, Wade's hill and there they would enjoy the beauty of the nature while eating their lunch. I know that Bill's helps, helpfulness to the young fellow from the city was not entirely a matter of brotherly love. 
So the narrator was wondering why that man Bill was so much helpful for a young fellow who is from the city, who was from the city. It was not entirely the matter of brotherly love. It was something else. I was paying him for his time. So why the Bill was so helpfulness to the narrator because he was dealing some business because the narrator had to pay him two dollars for an hour so i was paying him for his time because the narrator was paying him for his time in the end i paid him six hours including the lunch hour at what was then a very high price so as we know he the narrator had to pay two dollars for per hour so he had to pay for six hours including the lunch hour and that was a very high price but he was no more dishonest than i so this at the same time the narrator was saying he himself considered as a dishonest because i charged the whole thing to the firm because he said whatever he was paying to the hack driver or bill and the same he will charge he would charge from the firm but it would have been worth paying him myself to have his presence. His cheerful country wisdom was very refreshing to the country boy like myself who was sick of the city. Then here the narrator is saying that the money he gave to the hack driver is worth. Why was it worth? Because he was enjoying his company. His cheerful country wisdom was very refreshing to a country boy like myself who was sick of the country. Then he said, whatever he talked about the country or the village, for, for narrator it was new because he was from the city and the information he was getting from Bill about the countryside, it was totally new for him. As we sat on hilltop looking over the pastures and creek which slipped among the trees. As they were sitting on hilltop, on the hilltop, looking over the pasture. Pasture means the green field and creek. Creek means the stream. And creek which was among the trees. After their lunch, they both were sitting on the hilltop looking over the greenery and beauty of the New Million. He talked of New Million and painted a picture of words of all the people in it and afterwards he was describing all the people who lived in New Million. So Bill was describing beautifully about all people to the narrator. He noticed everything but no matter how much he might laugh at people. He observed everything everything, and he made fun of the people of New Million. At the same time he understood and forgave their foolishness. He described the minister's wife who sang, who sang the loudest in church when she was most in depth. She also described about the minister's wife who used to sing loudly in the church when she was under the under in depth under the depth. He commented on the boys who came back from college in fancy clothes. He also commented on the boys who came back from college in fancy clothes, those who were wearing fancy clothes. He told about the lawyer, wife, lawyer whose wife could never succeed in getting him to put on both a collar and a tie on the same day. He was also making fun of a lady who was a wife of a lawyer and she was not able to dress him properly. That means the both the collar and the tie on the same day. He made them all alive. He explained everything and everyone in such a beautiful way that the narrator felt like everything had happened in front of his own eye. On that day, I came to know New Million better than I did the city and to love it. Then the narrator says the bill describes that bill described the new million in such a beautiful way it made him love the small town of new million he says now he knew almost everything about this place on the other hand he was not much aware of the city where he was living 
in. Bill did not know about colleges and cities, but he had traveled around a lot of the country and had had a lot of job. Bill did not know about colleges and city, but he had traveled around a lot of the country and he had had a lot of jobs. Bill knew nothing about colleges and cities. Maybe he maybe because he never got chance to visit these places, but he knew everything in the village or country because he had done different type of jobs in the village. From his adventures, he had brought back a philosophy of simplicity and laughter. He got analogy of simplicity and of laughter by exploiting these places. Adventure means exploiting these places. He straightened me. Bill tried to build faith in the narrator that they would surely catch the Lutkins. If he left that beautiful scene of meadows and woods, they left that beautiful place of meadows, meadows means green land and woods and resumed our search of Oliver Lutkin, resuming restart and they restart their search for Oliver Lutkins. We could not find him at last Bill cornered a friend of Lutkins and made him admit what he guessed but they couldn't find Oliver Lutkin. At last Bill forced one of Lutkins friend to admit that Lutkin has run away to his mother's mother's farm. Olive gone out to his mother's farm. Then he had gone to his mother's farm. Three miles north, we drove out there, laying plans. I know Olive's mother. And his mother's place was three miles away from that place. And they again started their journey to find Oliver Lutkin. Bill said that he knew Oliver's mother and they went to Oliver's mother's farm. She is a terror, Bill sighed. I took a chunk out there for her once and she almost took my skin off because I didn't treat it like a box of eggs. Now, Bill is explaining the description of Olive's mother's behavior. She is a very strict lady who screams all the time. So once what happened, Bill had to deliver a trunk, a big box to her. When he took the box to the lady, she started screaming at her, at him. And he also, she also said that you must treat the box as the box of eggs. Might be he took it roughly. So she is a lady who re reacts very quickly at the people and really fake and the people are really frightened of her. She is about nine feet tall and four feet thick and quick as cat and she sure can talk. Now here Bill is describing her personality. She is about nine feet tall and four feet thick and she is as quick as a cat and she can surely she can talk nicely. I'll bet Oliver heard that somebody is chasing him. Then Bill said to the young lawyer that might be Oliver had heard that somebody was chasing him and he has gone he has gone on there to be hide behind his mother's skirt. That's why he went to his mother's farm to hide himself. Well, we'll try her, but you ha you would better let me do it, boy. Then Bill suggested the narrator he will he would go inside and tackle it properly and he has to be wait outside. So Bill the so Bill said to the narrator he will only treat the Oliver's mother. You may be great in at literature and law, but you haven't had real training in swearing. Then he said to the narrator, maybe might be he was he is good at literature, he is literate and he is a good lawyer, but you haven't had a real tra training in swearing. But he didn't know how to tackle the people by swearing. We drove into a poor farmyard. 
we were faced by an enormous and cheerful old woman enormous means huge so they both dr- drove into a poor farmyard and when they reached the earth, reached the farmyard they met an enormous and huge a huge cheerful old woman she was very happy my guide bravely went up to her and said remember me i am bill magnuson so bill bravely went to meet her and said asked her whether she remember him i am bill she he sorry he was bill magnuson the carter and the hackman and he gave his introduction as a carter and a hackman i want to find your son olivo then he asked he said he he came to her farm yard to find olivo her son i don't know anything about olivo and i don't want to she shouted now look here on listening that he wanted to find her son he shouted he she said she didn't know anything about her and nor she want to wanted to know she shouted now look here she said now look she shouted now look here we had just about enough nonsense then bill behaved very strictly he said they had enough nonsense about this topic this young man represent the court in the city and we have a legal rights to search all properties for this oliver lutkins he said we have been looking for that they have been looking for him for all over the places but they couldn't find him and then he pointed out towards the narrator and he said he is a lawyer from city and represent the court and he had he had got all the rights to search all the properties of the oliver lutkins bill made me sound very important and the woman was impressed and when the bill when sorry when bill gave the introduction of the narrator the the woman was very impressed with the narrator she retired into the kitchen and we followed and then she went to her kitchen and they followed her she seized an iron from the old fashioned stove and marched on us shouting then she went to the kitchen why what did she do she went to her kitchen and she brought an iron rod which was very hot and threatening them in order not to search her home you search all you want to if you don't mind getting burned first and she was threatening them to she she'll burn them with the iron rod and she was not allowing them to search she shouted and laughed at our frightened retreat so the oliver's mo- oliver's mother shouted and laughed at both of them because of they were they were frightened and they were running back retreat means running back let's get out of here she'll murdered us bill said they should move out of her house otherwise she will murder them bill whispered outside he said did you see her smile then will bill murmured outside whether the narrator noticed her smile she was laughing at us that she was laughing on them i agreed that it was a pretty disrespectful he the narrator agreed with his opinion and said it was pretty it was really a very rude treatment we did however search the house since it was only one story high so they both searched everywhere in the house since it was a single story bill went round it peering in in it at all the windows we examined the barn barn means the outhouse and stable stable means where the horse where a place where horses tied up we were reasonably certain that lutkins was not there and afterwards they examined the entire building and they found that certainly the lutkin was not there it was nearly time for me to catch the afternoon train and bill drove me to the station and in the afternoon the narrator had to catch the train so bill drove him to the station on the way to the city i worried very little over my failure to find lutkins as the narrator was unable to find lutkins and for that he was not that much regret as a as he was failure to find him 
I was too busy thinking about Bill Magnuson really and he was too busy think about Bill Magnuson really I considered returning to New Orleans to practice law and he was so happy to meet Bill Magnuson at New Orleans and he was thinking that he would return back to New Orleans once and he will start his practice of law there if i had found bill so deep and richly human might i not grow to love fritz and gutsaf and a hundred other slow spoken people sorry slow spoken simple wise neighbors then he was very happy by the nature of uh, bill magnuson and the other side he said the other people like fritz the staff and they all were very kind of spoken simple and they were wise neighbors and he loved all those people as narrator while going back to his city he decided that he'll go back to his back to new million again and he started his law practice again there independently i pictured an honest and happy life beyond the strict limitation of universities and law firms then he started imagine imagination and picture of an honest and happy life beyond the strict limitation of universities and law firms i was excited i had found a treasure and she, he was very excited and he had found a treasure i had discovered a new way of life what was the treasure that he had discovered a new way of life because he wanted to settle in new million and started his law practice there but but if i did not think much about lutkins and at the same time he was not too much regret about that he didn't find the lutkins the office did i found them all upset and he also thinking then when he reached there the people office people when they would come to know that he was not able to find lutkins they would be upset next morning the case was coming up in the court and they had to have lutkins and what happened the next morning the lutkin must be in front of judge he had to appear in court but he was unable to find lutkins i was a shameful useful i was a shameful useful useless fool and he found himself as a shameless and useless fool that morning my promises legal career almost came to an end before it had begun so that morning the narrator realized that his career is was going to be end and although it was just started the chief almost murdered me and the chief almost murdered him he hinted that i might do well in digging ditches and he commented he shouted on him it's better that he would go for digging ditches i was ordered back to new million and with me went a man who had worked with lutkins then again the chief had ordered him he would he had to go to new million again and this time he had one new, one man who had already knew new lutkin and he had worked with lutkin i was rather sorry because it would prevent my loafing all over again with bill he was rather sorry just because because he wouldn't get his time to spend with bill when the train arrived at new million bill was on the station platform near his cart so when they both reached at the new million again and they found bill was there at the station platform near his cart strangely enough that old tigress lutkin's mother was there talking and laughing with bill and the narrator was shocked that that lutkin's mother as she was very strict lady she was talking and laughing with bill not quarreling at all and they were not she was not quarreling with bill from the train steps i pointed bill out of my companion and said there is a fine fellow a real man so from getting down from the train the narrator pointed towards bill and said he pointed towards the bill and said to his companion that he is a fine fellow a real man a genuine person and he spent his entire day with him he had you hunt for oliver lutkins then the narrator said to his fellow that he would help him to search oliver lutkin yes he helped me a lot and same way he helped him a lot he must have he is lutkin himself then the fellow who came along with the young lawyer he said 
that Bill is himself is a Lutkin. What really hurts me was that when I served the summons, Lutkin and his mother laughed at me as, they, as though I were a bright boy of seven. So the narrator, when he came to know the, uh, the hack driver or Bill, himself is a Oliver Lutkin, he came to know that he was a Oliver Lutkin. It hurts him a lot. And when he was serving the summon, when he served the summons, so Lutkin and his mother, they laughed at him and and he was thinking that he was just like a boy of seven years old who had been fooled by Oliver Lutkin. With loving kindness, they begged me to go with them to a neighbor's house for a cup of tea. And with the loving kindness, they requested the narrator to go with them to a neighbor's house for to have a cup of coffee. I told them about you and they are anxious to look at you. And he also and they told the narrator that they have told them about him and they were very worried to look at him, said Lutkins cheerfully and they were making fun of uh, lawyer and they were saying that they were very anxious to meet him. They are about the only folks in the town they missed seeing you as yesterday. And they said they were the only people in the town, those who missed to see the lawyer yesterday. So students, this was a beautiful story, The Hack Driver, written by Sinclair Lewis. Here the narrator described how a young lawyer befooled by a hack driver, how innocent he was. And this story also teaches us that we should not trust on anyone without knowing them. Be otherwise, they will make fool of us.